Okay, one way to remove your regional field from your data is to do some high pass filtering. And so I have a grid here. It's a block of the magnetic data over South Africa. And from the southwest to the northeast is a regional anomaly called the BT anomaly. And this is cross cut by dolerite dikes and sheets. And so I want to extract these sheets from the magnetic data. And so what I have here is I've got one of the flight lines. So it is much better to work with the original data. Don't work with the gridded data and profiles extracted from the grid. Work from the original um, database. And so here I'm just going to plot it up. This here, as I click along it, you can see we're going from south to north over this BT anomaly. And this high here is the BT on this low. And then over here, these smaller peaks are the dikes that cross cut it. And I can actually zoom in on my map here. And so you can see here is this peak in the south, and further north are some other peaks. It's not very good data, it's one kilometer line spacing at 150 meters high, so that's why it is quite low resolution. And so you can see this long wavelength anomaly is my regional anomaly, which I want to extract, and I want to see these dikes in greater detail. And so what I'm going to do is in the database here, I'm going to go database tools, filter, high pass filter. I'm going to choose the column that is my magnetic data. So mine is G underscore Korea 7. Output channel, I call it HP for high pass. And then the value that I put underneath here, I type it in as well, so that I know what value I've used. And it says cut of weights, length, and fiducials. So it's all wavelengths longer than this. It's going to cut off, and it's just going to keep the short wavelengths. It's going to allow for high pass filtering. And so you can read it in more detail here. So. But the values that I usually play around with, 20, 50, 70, 100, somewhere there. So let's start at the moment at 120. And I click OK. And it's probably added in further down the line. As you can see, I've been playing around with this already. I'm going to right click on here, go show profile. I want to just right click on my image here, I'm going Y axis. And I'm going to do make sure scale each profile. Okay, and so what you can see here is the original magnetics in red and this HP120 in green. And so you can see here I'm picking up this dark and these features here. Something I wanted to show you though is I've played around with several values, and if I go to HP50 and I plot it here, you can see it's a much straighter line, the background is a lot flatter, whereas here on this 120 there's a lot more of this curve coming through, so I think there's still a bit of this regional in the data, so that's why it's very important for you to play around with values and find the best one that gives you an approximately horizontal line. Something else you'll see that HP20 is, it's plotted it, which is great, but if I now right click on my figure, go Y axis, and say same, I'm sorry here, under profile scaling, same axis scale for all profiles, click OK. You'll see everything disappears, and the reason is that, at least for me, my magnetic data is at 28,000, whereas these filters are 0 point something, and it's plotting them all on the same scale on the y axis. I'm just going to go here and unplot my magnetics, and right click and say rescale all. You'll see, a little bit difficult to see. See, so let me remove my HP120, is that this HP20 is a lot smaller than the HP50. So you're now starting to remove wavelengths um, that are important, that you're looking at these shorter frequencies, so these higher frequencies, the shorter wavelengths, you're removing information. So you don't want to get too small on the cutoff wavelength. Um, I can plot your HP70 
and you can see it's pretty similar to HP 50. I've done HP 100, and it's again starting to bring in this residual here. So play around. I mean, I think I would use HP 50, and then that's giving you your shorter wavelengths, your high frequencies, and it's removed your residual. So this is one way to remove your residual, and there are several other ways you could. Uh, I could continue the data and then use that value as your residual or your background data. But I found that this is your the easiest way to do it. But I mean, something to keep into account is that this data is quite nice. Uh, it's quite easy to see your uh, your regional here. Let's just put it here again. It's quite easy to see this beauty anomaly. <laughs> 